Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here and I'm back on some Neo 2 and today I want to show you guys an awesome spear build that I've been playing with. It is extremely powerful and it's a lot of fun to play. I need to give a big shout out to my buddy though, JT Boogie. This is actually his build. He told me about it and also he hooked me up with the gauntlets I needed to make the build. So big shout out to him because this build is awesome. But I wanted to show it off, and because I like to go into great details about builds, I will put timestamps in the description, and I will pin a comment. So if you want to skip around, that's fine. Just go ahead and skip around, and you can use those timestamps to do so. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and absolutely dominate this level. This is Calamity Pulse. It's one of the newer levels they added, but it's a really, really good level for just demonstrating stuff. But I'm going to actually use these. I'm actually using those not to actually get my gauge filled, but I just want to get the 10G buff right away. The snake is definitely, in my opinion, the worst one because you can't poison the snake. So if you're using poison on your build, well, the snake's just kind of annoying in that way. Go ahead and use Twitching Spear and smack him for a lot of damage. And this should finish him off. And there you go. Now I'm going to reapply the Rage buff here. I will run through another level with enemies and stuff at the end of the video. And now we're going to smack him with a weakness talisman. Throw the poison on him. Let's try to get a twisting spear off. And we did. Now let's smack him with this. And that should just flat out kill him. And let's reapply this. And we got one more boss to deal with. This guy always comes at you so quick. And the thing about this dude I hate is I really hate being confused myself and he is so good at applying confusion to you and it just sucks when he does that but there we go we took him out no problem the other thing i hate about this guy is watching this cutscene every single time even in co-op it's just frustrating i wish that they wouldn't do this you know at least for this level maybe for the other level sure but not for this level but there you go that kind of shows off like how awesome this build is at least against bosses but remember at the end i will show another level where i'll kill some enemies and stuff but this build is absolutely insane but now i'm going to go back to the main menu and i will tell you everything you need to know about this build Alrighty, now the first thing i actually want to talk about is actually the skills in spear because the spear has some really good skills now for this build I'm using Piercing Rain. I think this is awesome. One of the main skills I'm using is Twisting Spear. This is extremely powerful and it has amazing range to it. It's actually unbelievable at times. And then I'm also using Triple Threat. This is a boss skill. You have to farm for it. But it is an extremely good move. Especially if you can get the timing down where you're doing the perfect key pulse with it. It takes a little bit of practice at first. But once you get it down and you're doing it consistently... It is extremely good. Now, I am using stability. This will increase the damage of your thrust. The wording of it's a little bit weird. It could be translation. I have no idea because it says increases the force of your thrust. But it does actually increase the damage of your thrust. And it also will extend the range of your attacks. Now, I'm pretty sure that's for every single one of your attacks, not just thrusting attacks. So overall, stability is awesome definitely recommend this i'm also going for a lot of passives here but one skill i want to just quickly talk about is tornado a lot of people love this move i really like it myself you could actually incorporate this into the build if you want to i'll talk about that later but this is a great move it gives you poise it is extremely nice and when i say poise i'm talking about hyper armor so you don't get stunned when you're attacking i really like tornado a lot and I have noticed with Piercing Rain, though, once I get into the thrust, I've noticed that there's been a lot of times where I don't get stunned. So I kind of feel like Piercing Rain might actually have Hyper Armor as well. But I could be wrong on that. Now, mid-stance-wise, I really love Water Wheel. I've always been a big fan of Spear mid-stance. I really like Water Wheel a lot. But I also like the strong attacks for Spear in mid-stance. They're thrusting attacks. They're very powerful. So if I'm in mid stance, normally I'm doing strong attacks, I'm doing water wheel. In low stance, the only move I really like is flying monkey. And with this build, I just never go into low stance. I'll be honest, I kind of will stay in high stance almost the entire time. 
And if I do go to mid stance for fun, I'm doing what I said, strong attacks and water wheel, and that's basically it. And I really don't find myself going into low stance all that much. Now, all of the passives I grabbed was for damage for the most part. I got like the one that gives me damage when I have full life. I went for some key, some extra key. And also, of course, the thrusting damage. That's really good. Now, one thing I did want to actually talk about is actually cornered boar and also cornered tiger. Now, I went for the boar because it gives me damage reduction, and I feel like that's more useful because if I'm about to die, I'm getting hit really hard, that can kick in, it can save my life. Where Tiger, this will give me an increased attack, but the problem is I have life recovery and marine absorption. And because of moves like Piercing Rain, I can get my life back extremely quickly. So I really don't benefit all that much from Tiger because I'm just healing myself so quickly. Where I can benefit from Boar because that damage reduction can save my life potentially. And then I'll just heal up and I lose the damage reduction. But so what? It did its job. It saved my life. So that's why I choose Boar over Tiger. But if you want to go for Tiger, that's fine. If you don't want to have life recovery and marine absorption, that's fine too. But I recommend it just because it's awesome. Now another move I have here is Merciless Barrage. This is an out of key move. It's actually a pretty good move. It will replace your grapple. But I will say that I never really get the opportunity to really use this move. My set bonus is increasing the damage of it. So I definitely want to grab it just to have it. Because why not? But, you know, if you are using maybe Paralyze. And you're putting down traps. Especially against human bosses. I can definitely see this being really good. If you have a lot of grapple damage. And you can paralyze the bosses and then go for this. Plus, the set bonus is boosting the damage. I could definitely see this potentially one shot in a lot of human bosses. So, that's kind of cool. Now, real quick, let me talk about my skill customization if you are interested in that. Mainly, like, what do I have on for my custom active skill setting? Basically, this stuff. Now, when it comes to Piercing Rain, which is pretty much one of my main moves i am using damage boost constitution on triple threat i'm using damage boost strength i have 99 strength and i have 99 constitution now if you have 99 in that stat and you have damage boost stat it's only a five percent boost so it's not anything insane but it's better than nothing because if you actually take a look at the other damage boosting things that you can put on. I don't even know what to call these. They say custom active skill setting, but what do you even call these? Perks? If you look at the other perks, they do have downsides, where if you actually have the damage boost stat, there is no downside. It's just a 5% boost, and that's it. So I like it for that, because, for example, Raging Strike, I had this on Spear Flourish, it will boost the damage by 20%, which is quite a bit. But in exchange, you take damage when you use it. So this is a really nice thing if you're going for a critical build. But if you put this on Twisting Spear or Piercing Rain, you're pretty much talking about draining your health to almost one when you are actually using this. Now, if you have a lot of life recovery and marine absorption with the Extraction Talisman, I have noticed if you put it on Piercing Rain, you can recover a lot of your health back. But the problem is, if you're using Raging Strike, you're probably going to kill yourself against the boss. That's something that's happened to me multiple times. When I tried that, I put it on Piercing Rain. And against the normal enemies, I really didn't have a problem with it. I was able to kill them, like, real quick, do a lot of damage. And I would also drain my health, but I would gain it back a lot from all of the life recovery I had. But against bosses, it would drain me just enough so that the boss hits me, I die, and I'm like, oh yeah, screw that. So, I don't recommend it. But on Spear Flourish, it's definitely not bad. Because you use it, it does some damage to you, you recover some life, and you basically don't even feel it. I really don't feel it when I'm using this, so I do recommend it. And on Twisting Spear, I have Reckless Slice. This will increase the damage by 10%. But in exchange, you cannot actually key pulls. Now that's actually kind of a big deal for a lot of skills. But for something like a charge up move, I personally don't feel like it's all that bad. Just because 
We're charging up from a distance. We're going to let this bring us into the battle. Most of the time, we're one-shotting enemies, so that's something. And if we don't, then we will just follow it up and probably do either triple threat or we will do piercing rain. And we will absolutely dominate most enemies. No problem with that. Now, let's talk about my equipment and my set bonus, my accessories, my guardian spirit, my soul cores. We got a lot to talk about. Now, obviously, I'm using the Yazakani Magatama, and I'm also using the poison setup, so I have melee damage versus poison enemy, I have poison accumulation, and I also have Amiel magic power. Now, that can be replaced with whatever you want, if it's luck, or really, it's your choice. I like magic power, though, because I like my buffs, and I like longer durations, but I do have life recovery Amarita absorption. That's extremely good. And I definitely recommend getting that on your Yazakani. Now, for my second accessory, it's all the same. But I do want to say that not every accessory can get Life Recovery Amarita Absorption. The normal Magatamas can. The Wise General's Pillbox can. The Medicine Case can. And there are several other ones that can, but I don't know them off the top of my head. But not every single accessory can get Life Recovery Amarita Absorption. So keep that in mind. It's a really good effect. The more you can stack, the better. And the more life you will get back when you are attacking with the Extraction Talisman. Now for my Guardian Spirit, I'm using Tenji. It's the best Guardian Spirit in the game with no doubt. Just because of the stance based Amarita bonus. If you're in high stance, you get increased attack. If you're in mid stance, you get increased defense. And if you're in low stance, you get increased key recovery. You can stack all three of those buffs together if you want. But most lazy people like myself, I just kind of stay in high stance for the most part and I just get the attack buff. Sometimes I might go to mid stance to get the defense buff, but mainly I stay in high stance. Now, my secondary spirit is the boar. I'm not going to try to pronounce that name. I don't want to massacre it. But it's really good because it gives you minus damage taken mid-attack. So if you're attacking, you take less damage. That happens all the time. If you have the stats to equip this guardian spirit as your second spirit, definitely do it. It's only going to be a 7.5% minus damage taken mid-attack, but it's still better than nothing. Get that damage reduction while you're attacking. It is extremely good. Now for my soul cores, I am using the poison setup. So I have the toxic slime on. This gives me poison accumulation, 10%. And it's really good for applying poison onto enemies. So I do like to use it as an attack. Now one thing I like to do is actually use poison shurikens at the start of a boss battle. And if the boss goes into a dark realm, I will then use this to reapply the poison. This does give you hyper armor when you are going for it, so the boss isn't going to stun you out of it. Where with the shurikens, you can be stunned out of it each time you try to throw one. So this is a really nice soko. I definitely recommend using this. Now the other one I have is the snake boss soko. This is a great soko. It's good for damage. It's good for key damage. But it also gives you melee damage versus poison enemy. And it's 17%. That's kind of crazy. Now I feel like they might nerf melee damage versus poison enemy. Because everyone's using it at this point. It's super good. There's no reason not to use it. Because it's just so good. And I fear that they might nerf it because of that. Same with Tenji. Everyone is using Tenji. No one is really using other spirits. Unless they just don't know about Tenji. Those are the only people generally I notice who are not using Tenji. Are just people who don't really know about it. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. I hope that they will buff the other Guardian Spirits. Make them almost as good, if not as good, or better than Tenji in some regards. So that people will mix it up. And please, don't nerf Tenji. That's just so counterproductive. Now my other soul core I'm using is the wheelchair lady. This is a good attack. It can set enemies on fire really easily. But I'm really just using it for the faster movement speed whenever I get Amarita absorption. So if I kill an enemy or if I have the extraction talisman on, I can run fast. I like that. That is great. Now for the axe, I am using 
the Obsidian Knight Axe, and I'm really just using it for the Rage Duration. That's it. Rage is basically the best attack buff that you can get. There are other things you can do to get an attack buff, but I do not personally like those things. I recommend just go for Rage. Rage does have a downside. You're going to use more key to attack, and with the spear, it can be sometimes a bummer. I'll be honest, but overall, that's not much of a downside. And with the Rage Duration bonuses you can get, you can make it last for 40 seconds, which is quite good. So, 100%. Use Rage if you have the space on your build to put an axe on. Use the Obsidian Axe and get that Rage Duration bonus. You can also put Rage Duration on the axe. And if you do that, then you can have it up to about 40%. And at 40%, it lasts for about 41 seconds. I tested it and I think it's about 41 seconds, somewhere around there. Now, for my set bonuses, I am using the Warrior of the East. And I am using the Tiger of Higo set. Now, the Tiger of Higo set, that is actually optional. You do have a lot of different options you can use if you want to. Now, the Warrior of the East, the reason I like this so much is because it's heavy armor. Heavy armor is going to give you more defense, toughness, so you're not going to get stunned as much. And it's just a really good set bonus. I mean, this is a great set bonus. It gives you Merciless Barrage. That's really not a big deal. It is good if you can get it off. And, you know, one thing you can do is use Paralyze if you really want to get it off. And a lot of grapple damage. It can do a lot of damage against humans. But we're not using it for that. We do get the minus 3% damage taken. We get 4% melee damage. But we get Attack Bonus Constitution A. We have 99 Constitution. And I'm pretty sure, just like before, that's a 5% bonus. So if you combine those two together, it's a 9% general melee damage bonus. And that's pretty good for heavy armor. So that's really why I'm using it. Because yes, you can get a bigger bonus from using lighter armors. But I like heavy armor. I like the toughness. I like the defense. And... That is why we're using the Warrior of the East, because we get about 9%, at least 9% damage from this armor. Now, the other bonus I have on right now is the Tiger of Higo. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But the main reason I'm using this is because of the Piercing Rain damage. I'm a big fan of Piercing Rain. I love that move. It is so awesome. But you do have other options. Now, to get this, we're using the spear and one piece of armor. So when I talk about everything else here, it's going to be the same. You got to use the spear. You got to use another piece of armor. But one thing you can do if you want, let's say you're a big fan of Tornado. Well, then use the Exceptional One's armor and the spear. And you can get that 20% Tornado damage. And that can be a skill that you can use. And it is a really good skill. I like it a lot myself. I just personally prefer the Piercing Rain over it. But if you like Tornado more, use Tornado. And to do that, use this setup. Now, this is heavy armor, so you're going to have to invest more points into stamina to actually still have that green agility. But outside of that, it is really, really nice. Now, there's another thing you can do. Now, let's say you're a big fan of triple threat. You do have some options here, but what I would recommend doing is you could actually switch out the spear, one piece of armor, and you could switch out your accessory. And by doing that, you can get the master of spear set. Now, with this, you can get that up to the four piece, and you can get faster movement, enemy killed, triple threat damage, and melee damage. Now, a lot of people love Triple Threat. It's a very powerful move. So if you're a big fan of Triple Threat and you want that extra damage, go for this. That 5% melee damage, it can't hurt. You combine that with the Warrior of the East set, you're talking about 14% extra damage at least, you know, maybe more. Because I don't really know exactly how much the damage bonus Constitution A gives you, but I've been told it's about 5%. So I'm going to believe that. But yeah, I mean, this is really, really nice. So this is another option you have. 
Now you could just get the triple threat damage and skip the melee damage. To do that, you would have to equip the spear and you would have to equip the accessory and take off the axe. Now if you take off the axe, you lose the rage buff. So if that's the case, if you still want to get some extra damage, you're going to have to use the carnage talisman, which I don't like and most people don't. There's also a soul core you can use that can give you an attack buff. It's actually equal to rage. But it only lasts for 10 seconds, so it goes away really quickly. And I don't know the name of that Socor, but I will show it to you if you want. I'll do that in a minute. But one thing about this accessory as well is that this accessory cannot get life recovery and Marita absorption. So instead, I go for defense bonus magic. Now, one of the cool things about this, if you decide to go down this route, let's say you want to get that melee damage, you want that triple threat damage, but also you get that faster movement speed enemy kill. Well, what you could do is you could actually swap out your wheelchair lady with that faster movement speed, and you could actually throw in instead this other guy, which is Dojin. This guy will give you increased defense and Marita absorption. That's pretty good. Now that can stack with the Tenji buff. So you could actually go to mid stance, get the defense buff from Tenji, have this. This would give you double defense. It's pretty nice. So that's another option if you want to play around with that. Now let me actually quickly show you the Soul Core I was talking about. This one can give you... Increase attack for 10 seconds after using it, and it's the same as Rage. It's the same amount of damage you get off of it. It's really nice, but it's only 10 seconds. You got to use the Soul Core as well, so I'm not a big fan. I just much prefer Rage. So, like I said, I don't really recommend doing the double spear option to get the piercing rain damage, to get the triple threat damage, and to also get the Warrior of the East set. It's an option that you can go down if you want to do that, but I personally don't recommend it. And instead, I would say if you want triple threat damage, then just drop the piercing rain damage altogether because maybe you just want to drop it. You don't really care about it all that much. And instead, get that triple threat damage, get that melee damage, get that faster movement speed, and you can play around with your soul cores to get that increased defense buff instead of that increased movement speed buff that I have on right now. Now let me talk about the spear and what I have on it right now so you can see it. I have attack bonus constitution A plus. It doesn't matter if it's strength or constitution. I have 99 in both. I did remodel this by the way so that I can have an A minus in constitution and a B plus in strength. Now if you're wondering how to do that and by the way if you want to look and see what I have on my spear go right ahead. This is what I'm using. This is what I kind of recommend for the most part. Poison accumulation is probably the most important thing outside of the attack bonus. Constitution A+. But if you want to know how to remodel to get the double remodel, because a lot of people were asking me about this when I brought it up before, what you have to do is you have to pick the first one and then hit triangle. That gives you a little check mark. Scroll down to the second one, and the second one would be strength. And then I can confirm it by hitting X, and then that would put a double remodel on it and if you look here for example now it would turn into a minus constitution and then b plus skill so that is something i could do right now if i wanted to which i'm not but that's how you actually remodel for that also for my armor i have remodeled this for the stats so that's the refined option i have 99 strength i have more than enough stamina to actually be able to do that. So that's what I did. All of my armor is forged, so it requires less stats to actually equip. Now, if you want to see what I have on my armor, you can look right now. One thing you're going to notice is I have Twisting Spear damage. That is because Twisting Spear is awesome. It will one-shot most enemies. It is insane. The range is crazy. But one of the problems with Spear, it's really not a problem, but if you have a skill being boosted by a set bonus, like Piercing Rain, like Tornado, like Triple Threat, you cannot find skill gauntlets that can boost that damage. So that's kind of a bummer. 
That means that Piercing Rain, the maximum skill damage you're ever going to find for this is 15% because it's a set bonus. That's it. You're not going to find gauntlets that are going to drop with that skill on there. So if you ever wondered about that, that's what's going on. That's probably why Twisting Spear is the best skill to boost for this build. But I do think Water Wheel is a pretty dope skill and I don't have that. But if I did, you know, maybe I would play around with that. But Twisting Spear, it's really powerful. It one-shots enemies, and yeah, you can one-shot them at range. So that's a big, big deal. Now, if you guys want to hit me up to get the Twisting Spear damage, just like with my Dual Sword video, I am willing to actually drop my grave. If I have the time, all you got to do is just send me a friend request, and please send me a message too so I know what you want. Otherwise... I don't know what you want. Maybe you're just some random guy. I don't know. But if you message me, I'll know what you want. And then I will try to hook you up. My PSN is Jumpin' Production. Just like my YouTube name, but without an S, okay? So there is no S. It's just Jumpin' Production. I will actually put that in my comment that I'm pinning and in the description if you want to check that out. Also, I do want to say that if you are wondering about the luck, the life, and the attack on my armor, those are orange inheritables, and I did make a video about inheritables, how to rev farm, how to soul match, so if you want to actually check that out and see how you can actually put that on your armor, go and watch that video because I explained it all in that video and I will put a link to that video at the bottom of my comment with the timestamps in the description and in my pinned comment. Now I want to talk about my magic and my ninja so let's go ahead and do that. Now for my ninja I'm using 10 poison shurikens and I'm using 4 bombs. Now the bombs are for AoE and the shurikens are for single targets. Sometimes, though, I will throw the bomb into, like, a yokai realm so that when it spawns, it just automatically gets poisoned. That's pretty nice. But sometimes I'll take off the bombs, maybe a couple shurikens, and I will throw on the toxic ground fire traps or the paralyzed ground fire traps, especially against human bosses. I might use these. They can be useful. Now, my magic, I am using Luckbringer Talisman. It helps me farm. That's great. And I have three extraction talismans on. Now with this, I mean it's so good. It has a great duration. That's awesome. It also will allow you to get your 10G buff against a boss. That's really good. But the main thing of course is that life recovery Amarita absorption. If you're attacking, you're getting life back. And it can absolutely save your life. It is super, super good. Now I am using four barrier talismans which is just awesome for that key recovery speed, and it can automatically dispel Yokai Realms for you, which is just awesome. And I am also using four Rejuvenation Talismans. This will help me stay at full health, because with the Life Recovery and Marita Absorption and this, I'm almost always at full health, and I'm always getting that Honda damage taken half to kick in, because I'm always at full health. So this is super, super good strategy. And then finally, I have five weakness talismans on, mainly just because if I'm playing co-op and I have to use two weakness talismans on bosses, which does happen, unfortunately. But if I do actually have to do that, I can at least apply weakness to two bosses because there are levels now that have three bosses in them and people are always farming those levels. So this is definitely nice for just applying weakness to bosses in general. Now. Let's go ahead and talk about the clan. And I'm in Honda. Honda is the best clan. It really is just because you have damage taken halved. And that is 80%. Okay. Once you max out Honda. So, I mean, that's really good. That's almost always kicking in with Rejuvenation Talisman plus Life Recovery and Marita Absorption. I'm almost always at full health. So, that's just great. It makes me super tanky. And then also it gives you 28% active skill damage. It starts off at 4% and then it goes up to 28%, which is just crazy. That's seven times higher. And if you're using skills, 
that's just giving you more damage. So that is awesome. Honda is kicking butt. It's been absolutely dominating the clan wars. And there's a reason for that. It's because this clan is pretty much the best in the game right now without a doubt. Alright, so let's now talk about the stats. Because obviously this is important. I have 99 constitution, 23 heart, 12 courage, 34 stamina, 99 strength, 15 dex, 55 magic. Now, obviously, the constitution and the strength, that's for my damage. I chose to go for strength over skill because I want to actually put less points into stamina. Now, the 23 heart, that gives me 1300 key, which I think is a good number. The 12 courage, I actually went ahead and refined my Yazakani Magatama. And if I refine it, it requires me to actually have 12 courage and 12 magic. So that's why I have 12 courage. My key recovery speed is not that great. It's only 360 to be honest. I prefer it to be 400 if possible, but I do have the barrier talisman, so I'm really not worried about it. My life is also pretty high. It's 5,406. That's pretty good. But yeah, I mean, we have the B agility. That's really important. We have 336 toughness. That's really great. We have 2,413 attack on our spear. So, yeah, we're kicking butt, that's for sure. Alrighty, guys, well, that's going to pretty much do it for the build. That's everything I think I want to talk about. So now I'm going to go into a level, and I'm going to show off this build against some normal enemies, and then a boss. Alrighty, check it out. It's my favorite level. It's Defiled Sanctuary. Now, I swear it's a coincidence, but every time I do one of these build videos, this level is always available. And that's great because this is such a good level to show stuff off because there's enemies, there's a boss, and it's short so it's not going to take me a long time to run through the entire level. So I really like this level a whole lot. Now I do want to show off Twisting Spear and really the insane range of it because there's been times where it has literally shocked me on how much range this move actually has. And yeah... It hits hard, so you can pretty much one-shot every enemy in the game with it, especially if you poison them first, so that is something, or if you hit them in the back, that's the other thing. If you hit them in the back with it, oh my god, it can do some insane damage, but, ooh, I wanted to hit him, I hate Umbrella so much, die, there we go, but... I will say that it has literally surprised me. Like, there's been times where I've actually gotten a one-shot from super far away. And I'm like, whoa, man, like, I'm so far away. How did that hit? And it's hit, so it is something. Also, it's really easy to sneak up on enemies. So a lot of times an enemy will be in a corner just chilling. And you can easily sneak up behind them and do a twisting spear from across the map, basically, and smack them in the back. And just flat out one shot that enemy with over 20,000 damage. If you're hitting it in the back, you're going to get well over 20k with that hit. So, yes, it is extremely, extremely good. Now, I do want to use triple threat at least once here. And I'll use it against the boss, I think. Oh, okay, you know, or I'll just use it against you maybe. Because you want to decide to smack me with that from range. Okay, let's use this. Now, what I want to do here is I want to hit her with this. I want to back away, smack her with this. That's some really good range, right? Look at that. I hit her. Isn't that insane? And then there you go. Triple threat finished her off. And remember, guys, if you want to change up the setup, maybe drop the piercing ring damage. And instead, maybe you want to get the triple threat damage with the 5% melee damage. You can do that if you change the accessory, change the spear, change one piece of armor to master spears. You can kind of change it up. Or if you really like Tornado, that's one of your favorite moves, then go with the Exceptional One's armor. With the spear and one piece of that armor, and you can get the Tornado damage. So you have a lot of options with this, but this is a really, really good spear build. I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun to play. It's a lot of fun to one-shot enemies from across the map. The twisting spear that's just awesome 
and piercing rain is a great move and triple threat's a great move tornado's a great move water wheel is a great move the spear has a lot of awesome moves Alrighty, guys so well, that's going to do it for this video i really hope you have enjoyed it and that this has helped if it has will you please like the video for me be sure to subscribe for future neo 2 videos and make sure to click the bell if you want to stay notified that's the only way you're going to get notifications is if you click that bell so please do that i do appreciate it thank you very much for watching and i really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace out.